Welcome to Adventures with a Very Small Lathe. In the previous episode, I cut a curved slot into the plate while it was clamped to the rotary table at a single point. While it remains secure for the duration of the operation, this isn't good practice, and a viewer pointed out I should always hold the work at least two places when milling. In my most recent video, I started work on solving this problem by creating some custom T-slot nuts for my rotary table. There is plenty of detail on why they are required in that video, so head over and watch it if you haven't already. They're not quite a complete solution yet, as they are drilled and threaded for an M8 thread as is standard for the T-slot size, but all of the holding points in the faceplate are much smaller. I needed to make a fixture to allow me to clamp the plate down using one of the 4mm or 6mm holes into the 8mm T-slot nut. The fixture I show being made here is a simple thread adapter with an 8mm thread on the outside and tapped with a 4mm thread at the centre, so a regular M4 bolt can be used to prevent the plate from rotating around the clamping point at the centre of rotation. It doesn't need significant vertical force as the drawbar provides plenty. Using aluminium made it really quick to make. The fixture would be more secure if the outer diameter was wide enough to clamp against the top of the table, but I don't have aluminium rod stock large enough to hand. In combination with the drawbar, that should add enough stability to make milling safer and may reduce chatter as well. You can see the final clamping arrangement here, with the drawbar through the centre of curvature as before, and a bolt screwed into a T-slot via the fixture in the equivalent hole on the other side of the plate. After all the mistakes of the previous episode, I was a lot more careful with my measurements, notes and calculations this time. As before, I indicated the vertical slot as a reference, aligned the table at that angle and aligned the cutter at the corrected distance vertically below the hole defining the centre of curvature. I then took the corrected angles of rotation that I noted down in the previous episode to determine the endpoints of the cut on the rotary table scale. The cut does seem a little smoother. When cutting the previous slot, my depth of cut was limited by chatter. I could have tried deeper cuts this time, but it didn't occur to me until later.
Finishing this slot completes the slot geometry of the faceplate, but the three holes are still to be machined out to their final size. Up until now their only purpose has been to hold the part. In the final tool they are used to view the work being held by the faceplate clamps while adjusting the tension of the clamps from behind. In the original design I sized the holes to ensure that the centre of mass was located as close to the centre of the spindle as possible to reduce vibration. The two symmetrical holes are out of place due to measurement errors, which has in turn meant that the slot geometry is a little different, so I'm going to need to update the design and recalculate the hole sizes with the right centre of mass. In the next episode I'll be focusing on the spindle, rough turning the rest of the geometry, mounting it directly on the lathe and bringing it to final dimension. Please like and subscribe if you're interested in following this project and feel free to let me know in the comments if you have any thoughts or suggestions.